Okay, and welcome to part three, I think it is, of why I am an old fart. I may not be an old goat, but I'm certainly an old fart. Anyway, I thought I'd make the rants a little bit shorter, because I do tend to waffle on, and I've got a lot of things I want to rant about. So, in today's rant, I'm going to rant about modern cars, modern trends, and anything else I can fit into this 20-minute time slot. So, what can I say about modern cars? Well, modern cars just do not look like cars anymore, and they're all starting to look alike. It's getting harder and harder to tell one car from another. And as for colour, well, you can forget that. The only colours you're going to get on cars these days is black, grey and white, that's about all you get. You rarely see modern cars painted in colour. I mean, yeah, there's a couple here and there, but mainly it's just black, white and grey, that's about all you get. Modern cars just do not have any class. Now, back in the good old days, cars were classy. Cars had style. And cars actually looked like cars back then. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a little slideshow. There's some photos I've snapped. There's a few photos here that Dad snapped about 40 years ago. They're quite faded now, but I'll try my best to restore the colour on those. And there are a few other cars from various different sources, and I've even thrown in a couple of cars from movies and TV shows just for good measure. So, let's have a look at what cars should look like. This is a car. 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 All of these are cars. And even this thing looks more like a car than cars do now. As for these things, well, I think they're supposed to be cars, but I don't know. So it seems around the mid 90s, cars just started adopting this ugly round design, and yeah, that's another thing. Modern cars, or at least the majority of them, are just plain ugly, and they're all starting to look the same. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and I'm not making this up. This is absolutely true. I was out for a walk the other day, and I saw two cars parked on the lawn, and you know what? They looked identical. Everything on them was the same, despite the fact that they were from two entirely different manufacturers. It's no wonder it's getting harder to tell cars apart these days. And you know what else? Modern trends are another thing I just don't get. It's like everything that used to be considered cool isn't cool anymore. Back in the 90s, I got used to certain things being considered cool. Well, they're not considered cool anymore. And they've been replaced by things that are not cool. Like Abe Simpson once said, I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with isn't it, and what's it seems weird and scary to me. I can relate. I remember when being American was cool, or acting like an American was considered cool. I remember when rock, blues and jazz was cool. Now, none of that's cool anymore. To be cool now, or at least how it is around here, you have to be a hot-tempered, low-life scumbag from Europe, not speak a word of English, and listen to nothing but aggressive, gloomy, modern electronic music. Yeah, that's apparently what's cool now. Slang has changed too. I remember back in like the 80s and the 90s, everybody was using American slang like Totally tubular, dude. Now it's This is well wicked, isn't it, bruv? My spell check doesn't even recognize these as words. And the people among us who do still speak English are using so many weird words and phrases now. It's like English has evolved into another language. I mean, these days we've got words like Woke, bruh, fap, Wrecked, thick, cuzd, and so many phrases that just don't make any sense, like thug life, yeah boy, these nuts, everybody gangster until whatever. What the heck does any of that mean? At least I know what lol means, but that's about it. You know what else I miss about the good old days? I miss what hi-fi systems used to be. 
Now, your idea of a hi-fi system might be something that you plug your iPhone into and, you know, got a pair of built-in speakers and... That's not what I call a hi-fi system. No, to me, a hi-fi system is a big device with buttons and dials and switches and knobs on it and brushed steel and wood grain finish and they play real media like tape, vinyl, CDs, even 8-tracks. These things were practically a work of art. That's what a hi-fi system is. What do we have now? These silly subwoofer surround things. It's boring! Yeah. These are so bland and minimalistic and boring. They don't have any style. Well, I guess they do have style. It's bland, boring, minimalistic style. Yep. Boring modern sound systems to play boring modern music on. It's like a match made in heaven. And these Chinese-made plastic toys that people listen to their music on these days, they don't even come close to what I would call hi-fi. They're just a set of speakers with a built-in amplifier that you cannot even connect your existing hi-fi to. All you get is a dock for your phone, USB and SD card slots for MP3, Bluetooth connectivity, maybe a CD player, and if you're lucky, an external line input. But don't hold your breath. Speakers were different back then as well. Back then your amplifier was what provided the power to the speakers. They didn't have built-in amplifiers. So you could connect them to your existing hi-fi. And these speakers were full range. You had a woofer, a tweeter, maybe even a mid-range too. There was no need for a subwoofer to carry the bass. Because these speakers had bass. In fact, you could get stereo bass with these speakers. Now try that on a modern sound system. Speaking of subwoofers, the name is a joke anyway. There's nothing sub about a subwoofer. you think with a name like that they would be for sub-frequencies, you know, infrasound, which is stupid anyway because humans cannot hear infrasound, but these are just ordinary woofers, despite the fact that people call them subwoofers. Passive speakers are getting more and more hard to find these days. Do you know how long it took to find those passive bookshelf speakers that I use at my computer? Too long. That's how long it took. This was back in 2010, so I can only imagine how much harder it is now. Now I know what a lot of you are saying, but Clem, you're so old-fashioned. Get with the times. Throw out your old stereo junk and get a modern surround sound system. Well, I say, screw you. Screw you. Besides, surround existed back in the 70s too. There was something called quad surround, and that didn't need a subwoofer. Now I want to talk to you about swearing. Now, back when I was little, swearing was generally something you didn't do. You didn't swear, unless you had a good reason to. And even then, if you said a bad word, it was generally frowned upon. And if I said a bad word back when I was little, I'd get a slap. These days, however, parents let kids say whatever they like. And profanity is everywhere. Especially on the internet. YouTube being the worst offender. I mean, look at this, look at this. I'm not even looking for something with swearing in it here. But there it is. It's not like it's hard to find. This happens a lot when I'm watching YouTube videos. I'll just be watching a video. It looks pretty tame, looks pretty innocent, you know. Then all of a sudden, out of the blue, Somebody drops an F-bomb, for no real good reason. And on other things like YouTube poops, sometimes they'll just cut to some random person going effing this, effing that. And... Why? I think it's supposed to be funny, but I just don't see the funny side of it. I don't see what's supposed to be so funny about that. It's unnecessary. I think YouTube does actually have a rule against this filth, but it certainly isn't enforced. I mean... Would you want your kids scrolling through this and finding this kind of filth? Oh, I'm a kid. Nobody cares anymore. And that's another thing. People these days just don't care anymore. They casually use profanity in everyday speech, and if you try to tell them that swearing is bad, they're like, <laughs> You're taking away my freedom of speech. I'm so butthurt because you said that. Yeah. Boo freaking who? If I was in charge of the media, and I know I sound like a sad old git here, but if I was in charge, I would make sure every TV show, every video game, every movie, and every song 
is clean. And if I was in charge of YouTube, I would have the engineers work on a profanity filter that not just blocks the profanity in the comments, but in the video's content too. I mean, how difficult would it be with today's speech recognition algorithms which are getting better and better every day and AI, how difficult would it be to build a filter that listens out specifically for those words and just blanks them out or skips over them? Why don't they do that? And you're probably thinking, well, because people want to hear those words and kind of swine who absolutely must have your daily dose of F-bomb, well, that filter can be turned off. Why? Why would you want to? It just boggles my mind. Why you want to actually hear those words? I mean, do you think you're gonna die without hearing them or something? Speaking of dying, this stupid coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. Now, apparently I don't seem to be able to talk about this without offending people. Apparently I'm not allowed to have an opinion on it. So I'm gonna try and keep this as inoffensive as possible. And if you do get offended by what I'm about to say, well, I apologize in advance. I don't mean to offend anybody. It's just my opinion, which, like I said, apparently I'm not supposed to have. But this is something that's driving me absolutely berserk, and I'm sure it's driving you berserk too. I've got a lot of things written down that I want to say about this, but I better not say them because, you know. But I will say this. It has made me sick. Yeah. Sick of the lockdowns, sick of the social distancing, and I'm sick of seeing people wearing stupid masks. Personally, I think the media has exaggerated things and blown everything way out of proportion here. I'm sure it's nowhere near as bad as what they say it is. Yeah, there's a lot of other things here I've got written down that I really want to say, but it wouldn't have been so bad if it hadn't happened so quickly. You know, January and February of 2020 were absolutely fine. So was the beginning of March. And then all of a sudden, it just like, it's like it changed overnight. You know, one day everything was fine. There was nothing to worry about. Everything was good. There was no sign of trouble anywhere. Everybody was happy. Things were normal. The very next day, coronavirus, people wearing masks, social distancing, lockdowns. What the hell? How could this just suddenly spring up so quickly? You know, the day before that all happened, everything was fine. There was absolutely no sign of any trouble whatsoever. And then the very next day, like I said, it all, the world just went crazy. And people are going on as if this is a normal thing. You know, it's like they've completely forgotten that the world used to be different. And it's still going on. 2020 is over. This should be over too. I cannot accept this as the new norm. I won't accept this as the new norm. My autistic brain just cannot deal with this change. And yes, I am autistic, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. I was diagnosed at a young age. I just want everything to go back to normal. Anyway, I'm going to change the subject here. So, I'm going to rant about immigrants. Yes, you all knew this one was coming. So, to set the record straight, I'm not a racist. I've got nothing against foreigners living here, if in moderation. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a minute. So, back in the good old days, it was mainly Limeys and Yanks and a handful of foreigners from non-English speaking countries living here. And that was fine. That was good. There was nothing wrong with that. But then around 2004, I think, all the Yanks and the Limeys moved out and got replaced by immigrants. There's more of them here than there are native English speakers. And I've worked it out. And about 90% of the people who live here don't speak English as their first language. I don't mind a handful of ethnic diversity here and there. In fact, I think that's a good thing. But when there's so many of them that it makes me feel as if I am a foreigner in my own country, well, it doesn't take an Einstein level of thinking to realise that something is wrong here. Look at this signpost here. See how it's all in different languages? I don't even know what country I'm in anymore. I thought I was in England. And what the hell is that last language on there? It looks like Russian or something. I don't know why they're here. A lot of people tell me, well, they come down here looking for work. And they do good, honest, hard work. But 
that doesn't seem to be the case around here. No, I shouldn't say that, but it's true. Most of them are troublemakers. Go past a house where these immigrants live and it's in a terrible state. My next door neighbor is an immigrant and just look at the state of his front yard. And I honestly don't know why he's there because he doesn't have a job. He just mooches off the other tenants in the house and plays loud music whenever he wants. I don't know why they let him stay there. I really don't. And he seems to be a classic example of what immigrants are like. Or at least the ones around here. I, like I said, I no, I shouldn't be saying these things about them, but around here that just pretty much happens to be true. I wish it could go back to how it used to be. When it was mostly English people, English speaking people who lived here and only a handful of immigrants, that would be great. That would be a step closer to life the way it used to be. But I'm sure this rant's already getting long, so I'm going to stop here. And in the next rant, I'm going to rant about shoes, weather, and of course, smartphones. So, I'll see you then, and until next time, goodbye.